We must understand that nobody is a proprietor of anything. You know, next to our Bombay temple, there's a beach, a very famous beach called Juhu Beach. You must have seen many pictures of Prabhupada on the morning walk on Juhu Beach. So on the Juhu Beach, we see that sometimes when we go on a walk, many children go there and they make with the sand castles. They imagine, oh, I'm going to build such a nice castle, I'm going to live in this nice palace. And another man comes, he sees that beautiful castle made of sand, he puts his leg on it and the whole castle is broken. So similarly, I may have a lot of money in my bank, I may have many big buildings and cars, but cruel death will come and stamp and take everything away. The rich man is always telling the doctor, please extend my life, please extend my life, but the doctor cannot even extend his own life. How can he extend your life? <laughs> Nobody wants to give up his possessions. If I make a very big house, of course in your country we see that most people have same type of houses, but in many other countries these so-called rich people, they make palaces for themselves. So, if you get attached to your house, then again you have to take your birth in that house only. But you will not take your birth as a as the owner of that house, take your birth in the same house as a mosquito or a bug or an insect. <laughs> so you're still living in that house, but you're living as an insect and not as a proprietor. So Prabhupada used to give one nice story. It's a true story. Good. So once there was a very rich man and he had built a very nice house. He was very attached to that house, but ultimately he had to die and he died just thinking about that house. So in his next life, he took his birth as a cobbler, but as a cobbler, he was working right in front of the house which he had built in his previous life. And in that house, of course, now his sons were living. So one day, this rich man who had now become a cobbler went inside the house with some shoes. And those who were his sons in his previous life, they beat him up so badly they said, you poor man, you can't come into my palace. And they beat him up so badly that he went out crying. <laughs> so, uh, you may build a very nice house, you may get very attached to it, but then you will have the reaction also. So, the summary is that we must recognize that everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. Now, Krishna further says, because everything belongs to the Lord and it doesn't belong to you, you must only accept as much as necessary for your survival, not more than that. This is known as the principle of simple living and high thinking. You live very simply and you think highly. Think about the goal of life. Today what people are doing, they will live very high and think very simply. This is material philosophy. There is high living and simple thinking. People will borrow money, steal, do anything, but they must have a so-called high standard of living. So, uh, spiritual philosophy, as we said, is we live very simply. Why? Because we understand that life is very aware and we must use this life to understand our relationship with God. So, Krishna is saying over here that one should only accept what is in his quota, not more than that. Because if you try to accept more than that, then you will have to just over endeavor and there will be no time for spiritual life. So, if you understand <coughs> that everything belongs to God, if you understand that everything has to be used in service to the Lord, if you understand that nothing is mine, then naturally you will take a more humble profile. Today, if you go to the so-called rich people, they have no time to talk to you about God. Even if you go to a country like India, the so-called rich people, they have no time for devotees of Krishna. They have time to go to the clubs, to the bars and everywhere but no time for Krishna. Therefore, in the Srimad Bhagavatam it is said that if you have too much wealth, it becomes your enemy to spiritual life. That is why I say the people of your country are, more for, are the most fortunate people on this planet. They do not have the poverty of India and they do not have the opulence of the West. They are in between. Just the perfect position to approach God. Because you will see that as people get too much money, they have no time for Boga. Then they turn away from Boga. So, for a devotee, it is better to desire 
to be poor. This way he'll be dependent upon Krishna. He will not get puffed up and he will always have to work for Krishna. <laughs> Just like, you know, our whole ISKCON movement all over the world, even though it is so big, but Krishna hasn't given us one extra kopik. If our devotees don't go out and preach every day in the West, the next day there will be no prasad. <laughs> even now in America, there is so much wealth. Every house has three, four cars, but our ISKCON temples are all hand to mouth. They're all broke. And he always wants his devotees to struggle for him by thinking of him. So a devotee of the Lord is always struggling for Krishna and he's never discouraged by the struggle. Thank you for listening to His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. For more information, lectures, kirtans, photos, letters, all at one place, download Gopal Krishna Goswami app now.